So we have finished talking about the sequential game. So how about the sequence goes to infinity? Okay, so that means if player 1 finish the action and player 2 select the actions, after that player 1 will select the action again and player 2 will further select the actions. <coughs> so in this case, we will call this repeat game. Okay, so you have two types of repeat games. One is, <coughs> one is the finite repeat games. So in solving the finite repeat games, you just need to use the backward inductions. So this is similar to the sequential game. But how about the in infinite repeated games? That means the selection process goes to infinity. So say you have a prisoner dilemma. This is player one, player two. Okay. So they can select all the time. As you can see that if they cooperate, so they can earn a higher utility. So will they cooperate or deviate from, from the best situation? So it depends on the discount factor in various periods. So now we know that okay, one dollar today is worth more than one dollar tomorrow, because today you can consume first and enjoy the utility first, or you can use this one dollar to invest to generate maybe one point one in the next period. Therefore, one dollar today is worth more than one dollar tomorrow. Therefore, if we add, add the $1 today and $1 tomorrow, we need to add some discount factor, which is smaller than 1, to show to equate these two values. Okay? So in infinite gain, the player will receive the utility in each period. So the sum of all the payoff would be equal to 1 plus 1 times that discount factor plus one times the discount factor square because it's two period later and up to infinity. So this is the geometric series and it's equal to one over one minus delta. Okay, so this is receiving one utility infinitely, the payoff, okay? So we can compare whether they will cooperate or deviate. So if they cooperate, the utility of cooperate would be equal to 2 times 2 delta plus 2 delta square plus up to infinity. This is equal to 2 over 1 minus delta. But if they deviate, okay, say player 1 deviate, then player 2 will choose silent, where players, player 1 will think, okay, then in this case, player 1 will receive 3. But at the next stage, the player 2 will not believe player 1 anymore. So player player two will also think also. So since player one know that player two doesn't believe him anymore, so player one will also think. Otherwise, he will receive zero. So they will receive one delta plus one delta square plus to the infinity. So this is equal to three plus delta over one minus delta. Okay. So here we can see that if the value of the deviate greater than value of cooperate say this is 3 plus delta 1 minus delta is greater than the value if they cooperate okay in this case they will not cooperate so by solving this you can calculate that delta is smaller than one half so if delta is more than one half then they will not be they, they will not cooperate okay so in the real world, one of the uh, popular discount factor is the interest rate. So if the interest rate is higher, then the discount factor will be low. Okay. So if the interest rate, I mean, if in interest rate is higher, then the discount factor will be also be higher. So if higher the interest rate, okay, the player rather to deviate and use the money to invest to generate higher return in the futures. So the higher the interest rate, the greater the discount factor. So the future payments are not attractive anymore. Okay, so we finished the repeat games. Let's go to some advanced concept in the game theory. So the first one is called a simultaneous Bayesian game. 
So for the term Spacian, it means we add some probability concept here. Okay, so simultaneous means they will do the action simultaneously while there are some uncertainty here. Okay, say in this simultaneous Spacian games, player one would know the type of the strategies and player two would never know what is the type say in the poker games when you select a poker so you know the type while the other people won't know what's your type okay so your action depends on the type your type okay your action depends on what, which card you get and player two actions the other people's actions will also depends on your strategies so okay here there are k possibilities okay and in the set of t there may be t1 up to tk okay say there are t number of cards you will select and player two don't don't know your card so they will so they will put the probability of tk to guess which type of card you get okay so therefore in a card game your utility is a function of the strategies given your type and other people's strategy as to and actually which type you are and for you too the payoff would be his strategies and the strategy of the first player while the strategy of the first player is the function of the type also the type okay so let's take a look of some examples so this is the normal form of a simultaneous Bayesian game so you are given a matrix okay so what is uncertain is the T the T is only observed for player 1 and player 2 can only guess the probability say the t can be equal to 6 or 0 with probability 1 half okay so the Bayesian Nash equilibrium is just the normal concept of equilibrium so each player will choose the best strategy based on the other strategies so now the player two doesn't know the what is the value of t so the, so he will choose the ex highest expected payoff okay so here you have two scenarios the first one player one will play okay so t can be various value so first just consider player two choose left okay player one will choose up if t is equal to six and choose down if t equal to zero okay so player one will place up given t is equal to six and down given t is zero and player two will place left okay and if player two plays the right player one will choose down no matter what is the value of t so player 1 will choose down given t is 6 and down given t is 0 and 2 plays right okay so given these two scenario which is the Nash equilibrium so okay the first one will not be the Nash equilibrium because in this case if the player 2 choose L okay then the expected payoff would be the average of 2 and 0 that is 1 but the expected payoff of playing right is 2 because there are 0 and 4 therefore the first one will not be the Nash equilibrium the Nash equilibrium will only be the second one okay so this is how you solve the Bayesian Nash equilibrium so let's take a look of some more examples so actually the tragedy of the commons can be distilled into the Bayesian Nash equilibrium okay so first assume that the player one has this type of values which is known 
for player one, but unknown for player two. Okay, so player two will still have the utility that one two minus q one plus q two as our examples. Okay, and this is the probability of player two's belief. So here, player one will first maximize the utility. So this is equal to q one times t minus q one minus q two. So if you do the first order condition, you will get t minus two q one minus q two equal to zero. Then q one is equal to sixty five minus one half of q two, or q one is equal to fifty minus one half of q two. So if so, this is generated by if t is one thirty. So I put it as Q one H, stand for high. This Q one L, okay. When T is equal to one hundred, then at player two perspectives, okay. Again, player two is trying to maximize the highest expected payoff. So this is equal to two third times Q two times the value. So this is the value. Times the probability two third of player one choose H plus one third times Q two one two minus Q one L minus Q two. Okay. Then this is equal to Q two times one two O minus Q one bar minus Q two, whereas Q one bar is equal to. The two third of Q one H plus one third of Q one L. Okay, then you solving it, you will get Q two star is equal to forty. As a result, Q one H star is equal to forty five, and Q one L star is equal to thirty. So it depends on which type the player one will get. Okay, and player two will choose forty. Such that this is the maximum of the expected value of these two. So this is how you model the Bayesian simultaneous game.